Some historians say Beethoven had a black mother, and few people know that reggae legend Bob Marley's father was a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. Does this news make you think about these artists differently? Get up, stand up, stand up Do these facts make us reevaluate our own misconceptions, stereotypes, and racist points of view? And what is racism anyway? Ignorance, which is the mother of violence and brutality. It's coming up all over again, and, and something really needs to be done about it. People just don't communicate, and one side feels as though they don't have to communicate. Racism begins. By the turn of the century, and that's just nine years away, more than one-third of all Americans will be members of a racial minority, such as Latinos, Asians, and Blacks. But as the numbers of ethnic groups rise, so does the tension, which often explodes into crimes of hate and racism. There's no shortage of racial confrontations making the news. Not guilty! Crimes of hate have reached record levels. On college campuses last year, one in five minority students reported some kind of racial harassment. And this spring in suburban Long Island, New York, a black high school student was nearly beaten to death with a baseball bat just because he was seen talking to a young white woman at a party. Racism is passed down from generation to generation. If you know, you're know you growing up in a house as a kid where your parents are prejudiced against somebody, then you're obviously going to pick up those same things. It's built in to you from the moment you start perceiving the, the outside world. You start getting it in subtle ways. And in not so subtle ways. A black kid growing up needs to be able to look at television and read the media and get a positive image of his people and not just the negative images. And it's not just black people, it's, it's Mexicans, it's Puerto Ricans, it's everybody needs to see positive images of themselves. If this is a country, this country is supposed to be a melting pot, let's start melting. But the melting pot isn't melting for everyone. The concept of multiculturalism, where ethnic groups put their own culture first, is gaining prominence, as evidenced by the explosion of Spanish rappers. This is for the raza, raza, raza. Afrocentrism, which asserts the importance of black history and culture, is also gaining momentum. Some young black Americans have begun establishing their own separate proms, graduations, and schools. A controversial move which they say is an important step towards self-determination. If blacks had their own prom, it'd be called the unique culture experience. If whites had their own prom, it'd be called a Klan rally. When blacks or any minority group choose to do something to celebrate themselves, it is not a negation of you. It is a celebration of ourselves. It's kind of a thing where you want self-determination. Unfortunately for black youth, what we have been told is that we are to aspire to an American dream, that there's some great melting pot, do unto others as they do to you, uh, violence is wrong, um, uh, I have a dream type of situation, and unfortunately that has not turned into me controlling my own business, me controlling my own thoughts, me controlling my own school system, and me and my people having the power that's necessary to make decisions about our own lives. Many people hope that racial minorities would be given that political power by the landmark Civil Rights Bill of 1964. But 27 years later, civil rights is still a divisive issue in America. And the current Civil Rights Bill, which centers on the right to work, is expected to be a major battleground in the 1992 presidential campaign. Battles that really we thought had been fought and won uh, in the 60s Look like they're going to be have to have to be uh, you know fought again. On the music front, many say that if you're a minority rocker, you're going to have a harder time making it. I think if Living Color was a white band, they probably would have sold three times as many records as they sold. 
And it's really sad that something like that is the way it is. People just can't accept the fact that black people are, are, are playing the music that Living Color is playing. If I was like from England or Ireland, my music would be played more on the radio and also on TV. I think that because I'm Mexican, you know, you kind of have to do two or three or four times what these guys do in order to get some kind of attention. This is why Prince and Little Richard, they go out there and almost do a strip tease because Pat Boone sells more Tutti Frutti or sold more Tutti Frutti than Little Richard. In the early days of rock, many of the pioneering black artists had their classic records re-recorded in tame versions by white mainstream pop artists, such as Pat Boone. I didn't want to record songs like Tutti Frutti and other songs like that that don't make a lot of sense, you know, but I, the recording director went out, thank goodness, he told me to go ahead and do it because it was going to be a hit. So I said, all right, I, I didn't believe it, but we went ahead and recorded it anyway, and, and it was a hit. It was a hit. <laughs> Guess which version did better in the pop charts? A similar situation exists today, where many white rappers are making hip-hop music acceptable to the masses. This business is a product of the society that we live in. I think, to, to uh, go back to a comment made on my show by Vanilla Ice, I asked him about the fact that a lot of people I, I lot of, who are white of black bought his album but they didn't buy Modi's album or they didn't buy Public Enemy or they didn't buy some of the rap that came before him that didn't have a vanilla face attached to it. Vanilla Ice had the perfect answer. You know, it's not my fault. And I thought about it and it isn't his fault. Over the years, black artists have been accepted by the white mainstream from Motown in the 60s to MC Hammer in the 90s. But just because white people listen to black music doesn't mean it solves the problem of racism. Just because white consumers buy black product, that means it's gonna be, make it easier between the races. Because if that's the case, then there would be no static because black people always been entertainers. And white Americans always loved our singing, our dance, whenever. Well, there's still been problems. Black acts sometimes face banishment, anything from concert halls to radio waves. And it's a reality of the industry when it comes to making videos that black artists often get the short end of the stick. They always give us less money to do videos, but yet we're trying to compete on a scale um, of, of white artist videos, which obviously get a lot more money. I'm pretty sure that nobody ever told Motley Crue that they had to put a black man in a video. What? They sat up and told us that we had to put white people in our video. And, and anybody who knows me knows my heart, mm -hmm. that I ain't got nothing against nobody. But just the fact that somebody had the nerve to say that we had to put white people in the video. Some people feel that at one time even MTV was part of the problem. The channel included few videos by black artists until Michael Jackson exploded on the scene in 1983. CBS had to fight to get Michael Jackson on. I don't think it was because his music was black exclusively, but I think that because he was a black artist, and that's just... Is, we still deal with that. In the beginning, right, there was no black music, uh, or very little, uh, black music or any ethnic music as a matter of fact on MTV uh, but over the years they have progressed they're doing a service to the black community clearly a more integrated pop landscape depends on viewers listeners and the people and media who decide what we see and hear to let go of their misconceptions when we come back we'll look at the flip side two groups who challenge stereotypes and the difficulties they face There are two times in life when all people are considered equal. What happens in between is up to you. One, folks, racism. One more word, Earth. If anybody on this planet gets mail from outer space, that's going to be the mailing address, okay? 
He's white. He's red. He's yellow. He's black. I don't like him because he's different from me. Hey, folks, you know something? My hate is not based on color or creed. It's based on performance, okay? I have a cousin, a white Irish cousin who looks just like me. You know something? He's an idiot. He's lazy. He's ignorant. He's a huge pus-filled boil on the ass of society. I'm a spit. I'm a mick. I'm a wop. I'm a Jew. And where do you all live? New York. Great, folks. Get in the pot, okay? Get in the great big giant melting pot because we're making soup. American soup. I got two words for you. David Duke. Two more words. Nose job, okay? Yeah. I think you hear me knocking, David. And I think I'm coming in and I'm bringing a black guy, a Jewish guy, and a whole South Vietnamese family with me. And we're all going to sit down and watch Do the Right Thing until we get it right this time, okay? And guess who's making the popcorn? And somebody just turned on me. He was driving a cab and he said, you damn Arab, you foreigner, go home. What are you doing here? It hurts so much. It's easy for somebody getting stereotyped to fall back on that as like a uh, scapegoat. They have Black History Month, they have Black Awareness Month, then we have Hispanic Month. What happened to American White Month? month? <laughs> Yeah, it's because matter. they're lazy. You can they're lazy, that. they think, well, well I can use everybody. this as an excuse and stand welfare and just blame everybody else. Well. Stereotypes basically are what creates the problem with racism, I think. They always say Chinese are good in math, and I'm terrible at math. I can't add, I can't divide, I can't do anything. I'm terrible with numbers. Remember playing Army as a kid? <laughs> See, I hated this game, man. <laughs> All my buddies would go, okay, and it's the neighborhood against you. Where were you born? I was born in East LA. They're the bean pickers, they're the, the uh, harvesters, or whatever you want to call it. Or you have the lazy Mexicans. Either they're lazy or they're the ones that work with their back, you know, and they're here to take away American jobs, I guess. Some of the stereotypes about white people. Huh. No rhythm. <laughs> I'm a Negro, and I am singing into your face. A Negro is probably breaking into your place. Hey! Black people, they always say black people eat watermelon and fried chicken and all that. Well, um, you just always hear these things, but it's not really true. People are people. If you close your eyes and listen with your ears, you know, your body's gonna take you. Yep. It's only when you open your eyes and your brain starts saying, well, this person's like this, so, ding, is when, <laughs> you know, you start messing up. Yep. A lot of times, you know, my friends, I tell them, you know, I say I play in a band, and immediately they think, you know, what? School band, marching band, <laughs> and it's like, no, I, I, I play in a heavy metal band, and they, and they automatically say, oh well, I don't like that kind of music. Still, you know, you have the stereotype, you know, black kids listen to rap, and white kids listen to rock and roll. I've been playing guitar ever since I'm about five, six years old, and I was playing Kiss. Like my mom and dad and them be when they watch the Soul Train and my little sister be dancing and all of a sudden I come running there, rolling all on the floor and they like, look at me like, you know, what's wrong, what's wrong with this kid? <laughs> you know, why are you like this? A lot of people are like record execs from different companies, I'm not going to name which ones, but they, they send this stuff to the rap department first. Because they like to see a picture and they know, you know, who it is about or who it's coming from. And they say, yeah, check this out. They throw it on a tape deck and it's like, whoa! It's like, this is crazy, man. I don't know what to do with this, but I'm gonna send this to the heavy metal department. The heavy metal people are like, well, you know, they're, you know, they're black. I guess they're scared we're gonna change. You know, one minute, we're gonna we be just got this little gimmick. In there. Little, yeah, just yeah, once, we, once we get in the door, then we're gonna start funking it up. Yeah. Ow. <laughs>
like as to white people feel that heavy metal is their own little sanctum and that black people shouldn't be intruding on it. You have rap. Stay with rap. We don't mess with rap. You do rap. Now you're getting all mad and you're ready to burst because I'm the main man from Bensonhurst. I'm not a racial killer. I'm a woman thriller. And when I see a girl, I'm gonna drill her. Kelly. That's the man right there. That's the man who kicked it all off for us. My friend Vinny DeCappa, he was the one who started all this. He was the one who always got us into the rap, you know? I didn't really like rap until he <laughs> until he got us into it, you know? All my friends are rappers. It's like when we go out and party and hang out, we're hanging out cooking, you know, we're hanging out, eating dinner, we'll, we'll make a rhyme out of it. But I'm standing there and I'm looking at her gold. It looks so good, I ate some pasta vaso. <laughs> pasta vaso. Rap is for everybody. Rap is what you feel. Rap is, is what you have inside, you know? I mean, it's not just for blacks. Nothing's just for blacks. Uh, music is for everybody. But these people, they sing about their own race, you know? What I want to sing about is everybody, no matter what the color, no matter what everything is. I want to sing about the world. Stop it! Uh, I've experienced a little prejudice because I'm from Benson Heights. When I lived out in California, I had like kind of a reputation because of the neighborhood that I came from over a certain incident that a few people were involved. I can't say a few, there was 30 people involved, but the racial incident kind of ruins our reputation. And the only way we can straighten that out is by the people coming here and making friends. And to me, that's impossible because I know it'll never happen. As black kids growing up around here, we're not taught to fear white kids in a physical sense. We're not taught to be scared of that. But when we go out on the road, you know, you get up into the Northwest and the black kids up there are like, man, watch out, you know? You can end up dead real quick. And we're not, it's like, I guess it's right out of naive, being naive, but we're not scared. And I guess that's what puts you in a little bit more danger is that we get out there and they, we're not scared of them, but we should be cautious because they don't like us. They don't want us there. And you know, they'd rather beat us in the head with a baseball bat than shake our hands. I never had any trouble from black, black people personally, but I gotta tell you the truth, I'm prepared. I'm ready to throw down with anybody. I don't care how many people are around, but I never had any problem personally. But if you come at me, remember I'm capping. And if I have to, I cap you. I think everybody has prejudice. I'm sure that they feel certain ways about certain people. I'm sure they maybe, not consciously, but subconsciously, stereotype people. Isn't that a form of racism? Stereotyping? Mm -hmm. I don't believe so. I mean, I believe that if you see eight bad apples in a bowl, you gotta assume that maybe one, one more is bad. I love you like my brother. I love uh, being from Bensonhurst, everybody says, you're a racist, you're a racist, but I don't find myself being a racist because an incident that occurred, a couple of rotten apples, you know, that you don't have to ruin a whole neighborhood for that. <laughs> well, everybody that I know is black. It'd be impossible, in my view, for them to be racist. I don't see how I could be a racist because I'm on the oppressed side of the, of the scheme of things. It doesn't really matter if you're black and a white person coming into a music setting, because all people have kind of differences, but music kind of says it's the one common thing. You, know, you have something in common with music, like we both love this music, and we can both work on this music, and we understand it means the same thing to us. My advice to you, no matter what you do, stay clean and sober, and now my rap is over. Yeah. Ciao, Ciao. Hey. He asked me if I worked out, if I, you know, was into working out in the gym or in a Nautilus Center or whatever. And I told him no, that I just work out at home. And he looks at me and he goes, you, you colored, you know, it must be in your genes or something. And so I just kind of ignored him. I'm black. And they say, nah. I say, what do you mean? They say, because uh, black people don't look like you.
Heidi. I feel that I'm a racist because that uh, when I look at myself, when I think of how my kind of my reactions to other people, the way I live with other people, I think I'm racist. I got to face up to this. I mean, it's something I got to deal with. What makes us uncomfortable about people who aren't like ourselves? Racist ideas and attitudes often stem from ignorance. For many white people, rap music has replaced that ignorance with information about black culture. It's also provided a glimpse at the pervasive problems of race and society. Getting a point to our brothers and sisters who don't know the time. Boy, so we know the ride. Right. in your head, you know our job to build and collect ourselves with intellect. Come on. What do you like best about Public Enemy? Uh, I like the way they rap about black rights and stuff, and it teaches us a lot of stuff, you know, about how black youth and stuff are struggling. Members of racial minorities who have achieved material success often find that their improved economic status brings with it a different set of racial barriers. We woke up yesterday morning and couldn't get a cab. We had cab drivers turning on their uh, not-for-hire signs every time we try to go up to a cab. Beautiful city in New York. Beautiful city in New York. And I said, damn, I don't feel like being black today. Not meaning that I don't feel like being white today, but I still feel like being black today. I mean, come on. Mr. Cab Driver, don't like my kind of skin. When we first, first moved here in 86, um, we got this letter about a year after from our neighbor uh, explaining very clearly that he did not like me for being Mexican and my wife for being black or Afro-American. And that no matter how many albums I would sell or how many people like my music, I was still always was going to be trash to him. Hostility towards a neighbor for being different is sometimes taken to ugly extremes. We would begin to expel all the Mexicans and Central Americans that have come into this country. And then we would encourage through agreements if possible black race to leave North America the Asians would be immediately out of here especially the Asians if it was resisted then it would be handled Tom Metzger is the leader of an organization called white Aryan resistance one of over 250 known hate groups in the United States now his media savvy son John carries the racist message to a new generation he produces racist newspapers and cable television shows featuring reports on racial terrorism and hate group activities, as well as a steady stream of inflammatory images. If a group of people are just going to lay down and be run over, my race or any other race, they deserve what they get. But what drives some people to take such extreme positions? Two causes are uncertainty and fear, concerns fueled by the current economic recession. A lot of people today around this country are unemployed. I mean, the factories are closing down. People are angry, people are searching, people are weak at the time, and these groups take advantage of weak individuals. From the most extreme acts of hate to the mildest forms of prejudice, most racism can be traced to ideas planted early in life. As a child, I was very um, against white people. I was like militant myself. I've been around white friends of mine who, who I've heard say something about blacks do this or blacks do that. You know, and I've been around black friends who said whites do this and whites do that and they do this to us and that to us. And that's really, you know, they're just talking and repeating things they're heard most of the time. But I think it's also, it's teaching hate. It's never going to end unless it ends in the home. We're trying. We really are. So what about racism and love? Two percent of all American marriages are interracial. That's over a million couples. Yet one out of four Americans believes that such marriages should be outlawed. So it's not surprising that interracial couples get hassled from many directions. Excuse me, uh, do you have a problem? 
Yes, I do have a problem, to be honest with you. Fake, tired brothers like you coming in here, that's so typical. I can't even believe you brought her stringy hair ass up here to eat. We get it ourselves sometimes just being together. People don't like to see it, and they're kind of very obvious about it. They make it known that they don't like the idea that we're together. But I do feel stares. Yeah, that's what I feel. Like, sometimes we'll be walking around and she'll say, do you think people look at us funny, you know, sometimes? And I go, yeah, they kind of look at us. You know, they take a double take, you know, sometimes. And it's just like, I don't care, you know? <laughs> I don't care what they think, you know? Racism is not something that you're born with. You could put a white kid, Mexican kid, Puerto Rican kid, black kid, Indian kid in a sandbox and they'll all play until they're 80 years old. Unless somebody comes in there and tells them something's bad about the other person, it's something that's definitely taught. Solving the problems of racism demands open channels of cultural understanding, especially for the youth. For every individual, it means compassion instead of resentment and peace instead of conflict. It all comes down to a matter of respect. And as we all know, respect is a two-way street. Look, you can get on me for how I talk, for how I walk, for how I dress, and how I play my music. But there's one thing you, you can't accuse me of. And that's me disrespecting you, disrespecting you of your color. color. Now, I'm not saying I love you. But I don't hate you. So listen. I'm gonna treat you. I'm just gonna treat you the way I want you to treat me. All, all right? right? And if you can't do the same, the same, the, the same. same. Then we both have a problem. There's several warnings, and they say they followed proper procedures. While they're acquitted for lost. Lust... Astral and get up to four.